I am going to welcome our special guest, Senior Advisor to the President, Tom Perez, to um, open our panel discussion oh. today. Thank <laughs> you. This, this is your we're, house. We're going to take team it, but you can just say hi, then well, I'll hey, then Good I'll morning, the everyone. <laughs> it's an honor to be back here in uh, Minnesota. Um, I'm Tom Perez, and I have the privilege of serving as a Senior Advisor to uh, President uh, Biden and uh, the head of our Office of Intergovernmental Affairs. Um, I've been to Minnesota many times in many different hats. I had the privilege of serving as your Labor Secretary uh, during the second term of President Obama and leading the Civil Rights Division during the first term of President Obama. And I have the fondest of memories of uh, the time I spent here in Minnesota. The diversity around this table is indicative of the diversity that is Minnesota and mm -hmm. our country's mm -hmm. greatest strength. We were just talking about uh, migration patterns from Somalia, mm -hmm. and uh, um, we have a large Somalian population in so many mm -hmm. wonderful cities across this country. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to start by saying thank you to um, our friends in Ramsey County, and thank you to our friends and colleagues in St. Paul, because uh, we have been through a lot over these last few years. This pandemic uh, was uh, so challenging for so many people. And uh, one thing I learned from my own experience, you know, when we have the moments of greatest challenge <clears throat> in our country, those are also the moments of greatest opportunity. You know, as your labor secretary under President Obama, the laws that I enforced for the most part, we're the product of the New Deal. A period of time, you know, in the Great Depression, World War II. And when I led the Civil Rights Division of the Justice Department, most of the laws that we enforced were a product of the tumultuous and remarkable civil rights movement of the 60s. We're in another one of these moments. And what President Biden did early on, and Vice President uh, Harris, is they understood that communities know best what they need. And the American Rescue Plan was premised on two basic values. Number one, <clears throat> equity. Making sure that as we help communities get through this pandemic and rebuild, equity was the defining value. Making sure that rising tides lift all boats and not just the yachts and the investments of the American Rescue Plan, the investments in um, the various pieces of legislation that have really been groundbreaking and transformational. That equity lens is everything. And secondly, a value was, we trust you, <laughs> Madam Chair, <laughs> <laughs> President, <laughs> good friends, yes, friend. <laughs> and, and colleagues. Because the American Rescue Plan was about um, investing in communities, not, pro, not prescriptively, but with an understanding that you know what's best. And what I admire about what you did here in Ramsey County, St. Paul, is that you understood that we need to invest in our young people. We need to understand that our diversity is our greatest strength. <clears throat> but we need to make sure that we are harnessing that diversity. And one of the things, one of the many things I learned doing workforce at a local level, at a state level, and at a federal level, is you've got to take the, uh, you, you have to take people where they are in life. So just investing, here's a training program. But, you know, if you have child care needs, if you have housing needs, if you have transportation needs, and we're oblivious to those needs, we're not going to be successful. And you get that. And that's why I'm looking forward this morning to listening and learning from all of you about what you have done. We have been proud to be partners with you, and we are excited about what you're doing. We have an unemployment rate in this state that is remarkably low. Um, but at the same time, when you disaggregate unemployment rates and look at various subgroups, it masks challenges that persist. And everything you've been doing, whether it's at Bridge Makers, Hack the Gap, whether it's at Youth Lens 360, or in county or city government, you understand that. And that's what today's conversation is about. 
making sure that we don't ever leave anyone behind. So I'm looking forward to listening to all of you. Um, and I, again, I want to say thank you for your partnership. Thank you for your vision. Thank you for your accomplishment. We've got a lot more to do. Uh, but I'm excited to be here and to learn from all of you. Oh, so, wow. wow. You, get, you get me so excited. I'm, I'm inspired again. Uh, thank you so much, Senior Advisor Perez. I Tom is a lot quicker. How's about that? <laughs> Tom, you can call we me can Mary save Joe, a lot of right? time today you if you me, just call me Tom. Okay? You can call me Mary Joe. We, from, from the moment that Tom got uh, appointed to this position, he's been a, a friend of ours. He's been a friend of counties, of local government. I met with him almost a year ago now, uh, and he said, what can we do together uh, as um, See, as president of our National Association of Counties and a board member in Ramsey County here, we know that it's important to have partnerships with the federal government and local government. And you have just been there from the start, working with us, wanting to know what you can do. He called me yesterday, you know, and, his, uh, and he said, okay, what, what do we need to talk about? What's, what's important? So just thank you so much for all of your uh, willingness to, to partner and, and the fact that you get it. Like you said, we get it, you get it. We, we have work to do together and the ARPA dollars that, the American Rescue Plan dollars, the CARES dollars that the federal government uh, has given to us and we're working on. You said very clearly, yes, we have challenges, but it's also provided us with amazing opportunities. And we are so grateful to be working with you on all of those. And I'm, I, I'm so grateful that we have my, my colleague, our, our board chair, Commissioner Martinson, and my, my colleague, Rena Moran, also on the board, former, former legislator. And uh, we're just so grateful that they're here, our county manager, Brian O'Connor, and of course, our great partners at the City of St. Paul. And you're going to hear from all of the people around around this table. You've you've been. We Ling Becker is our director of workforce solutions. She's been um, amazing in setting all of this up, and we are just so happy uh, that you're here to to hear from this. We I want to mention that we're in the building, um, the Center for Economic Inclusion, which is a great. This this building is. Uh, sets up these partnerships. It's, it's meeting space for our partners, and we, uh, we think this is a great model for the rest of the country. So thank you so much for being no, thank here. Thank you. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to our director, Becker. Yeah, thank you, Commissioner McGuire. Um, welcome, everyone, to this conversation. Um, uh, truly, I am so honored to have the opportunity to facilitate this conversation and to be able to um, elevate the work of our community and the intergovernmental partnership that we did have deep with the city of St. Paul to maximize our ARPA resources. Um, so um, today I want to have a chance to talk to some of the um, training providers that we have uh, funded through the American Rescue Plan Act, but also to hear from some of the participants and the impact of the programs of over uh, a $23 million co-investment between the city and county um, around a variety of initiatives. But today we are gonna be focused on our earn and learn initiatives. And we're gonna hear a little bit more about why that is so critical and so important um, from the folks in the room. So um, I'd like to first start with um, the three organizations and I'd like to start with Dario Ortero. Um, Dario, all three of you are located here in the Osborne building, and this is a special building to the city of St. Paul and the Ramsey County. Uh, lots of amazing things are happening in this building. You've been a big part of that. Um, can you speak a little bit to, um, you know, why these organizations are invested in this building, you particularly, but also your colleagues here, and, and why it's so critical to, for the young people who are being served by these training programs um, to have um, this connection into this building and this space? Thank you. Um, well, I mean, at Dara Terrell, CEO of Youth Lens 360, we're a video production company. We do storytelling, um, and we positioned ourselves in this building <clears throat> about five years ago. So we survived through the pandemic, and, you know, there's times when I feel like I was the only one walking in the building and walking out the building. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> I think what's so important is relationships, right? Mm -hmm. um, Bling, I think we had a coffee in the mm -hmm. lobby three years ago, and you just wanted to meet and say, What's going on? Where, where, what are young people dealing with right now? What, you know, how can I help? It wasn't about an RFP. It wasn't about money. It was just about simply building relationships. Um, I think that's why this building is so important um, because we were able to, you know, really connect with Rich Packett, who own, is one of the owners of this building, who said, "I want you to come into this building. I like young people in this building, and a lot of." other building owners around here don't see young people as a resource and valuable, right? Like they see them in the skyway, they think they're a nuisance, but when he saw people in this building that were 
you know, they had cameras in their hand, they were doing interviews, they were working with other people. And so that allowed for an opportunity to build a space to where young people could walk in here and feel like they belonged in this building. Um, and so it was so important because young people don't always have that experience when they're in high school or when they're in middle school, right? But we need to get young people into these uh, opportunities faster, right? To be at a water cooler or down in the lobby meeting somebody that owns a tech company. Uh, so there's, there's some companies in here that are like, you know, $100 million companies. And so if, if I'm a young person and I want to see my future, what better than to be able to walk through the lobby and meet somebody that's doing something that I have no idea about, I didn't even know in high school existed. Um, because that's the future that we're looking at, right? Ten years from now, we don't even know what jobs we need to place. Um, so young people need to be able to build these relationships because that's the, really the only thing that's going to drive them forward. And so what you'll see often is like a young person hanging out in the, in the lobby downstairs with a camera. Uh, next thing you know, they're doing headshots for a company uh, that is on the, you know, on the 11th floor or whatever because they're like, they've made a relationship. They see this person is, is now becoming a thing where it's common to see me in this building. So whether I'm in a hoodie because it's cold outside, um, I'm still respected and valued as a young person coming in here to do business. Um, and so this, this place has been so important for that reason and for other companies like Carolines and Bridge Makers to be able to have connections with each other to tell each other what's going on. Um, because that's really all you do it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you, you know, I talked to Caroline before and she's like, hey, fill out this paperwork. Something's coming down the pipeline. <laughs> you need to know what's going on. If I don't have that connection, then I don't, I miss out on opportunities. Mm -hmm. And coming out of the pandemic, that's probably one of the most important things was being able to come back to a building, come back to a place where you see is vibrant. People are doing things. It spurs energy, it spurs innovation. Um, and so I've just been blessed to be able to say, let's make this our home. Let's bring other people that we want around us that have the same mindset and let's let young people thrive in a building like this. And so it's been it's been a very successful thing with our E3L cohort uh, that we've been running for the last six months and will continue to run for the next three years. Thanks to Ramsey County support. All right. Um. So Thank Carol, you. yeah, oh, sorry. Thank you. Yeah. So Caroline, um, we've we've partnered um, through the county on a variety of initiatives. Um, one of the first. Um, ARPA efforts we did was actually to braid in um, public assistance programming to train um, women who are on our public assistance program in technology careers using ARPA dollars as part of the training stipend. And then we continued to build on that earn, earn, learn, and earn and learn model. And so Caroline, can you share a little bit about the work you do at Hack the Gap and particularly how you support women and non-binary people in pursuing a career in tech and why their presence in technology is so critical from your organization's perspective. Thank you. Um, thanks for the question. So at Hack the Gap, you know, I think we best support women, non-binary people who are pursuing careers in tech by creating a space where they feel encouraged, they feel welcomed, they feel like they can really belong. And so whether that's by seeing themselves, parts of themselves within our team members, our teachers, our mentors, or whether that's creating really inclusive spaces and events and hackathons. So for example, we offer on-site child, child care for our events. That way, new moms and parents like myself can be close to our babies and nurture them when we need to, but then also to be able to, you know, offer things like computers. So then that way folks don't have to not participate just because they don't have a laptop, right? Or offer scholarships um, to be able to participate in some of our training programs. And so our main focus area is around the tech training programs. And we've been able to, uh, you know, partner through public and private partnerships to be able to offer um, stipends during the training itself, but then also to partner with businesses and companies to offer paid internships after that training because we know that one of the biggest challenges people have is finding that first job and having a paid internship is incredibly important because then you have something to put on your resume and you have something to speak to when you're in that interview um, and of course you know technology is everywhere right and whether it's AI helping us make decisions about hiring or other things or whether you know if someone has you know the really fancy programmable coffee maker we need we are seeing how technology is just becoming part of our everyday and so because of that, it's really important for us to pave more pathways into the industry because we need more diverse people to make less biased technology. Mm -hmm. um, and really that's what drives us at Hack the Gap is that ability to pave those pathways and that's what keeps us going and helps us wake up in the morning. Excellent. Thank you. All right, Cole. Um, you, um, I'd love, we'd love to hear a little more about yourself. Obviously, you have a tremendous history of throughout the pandemic of leadership that you took on on behalf of young people 
for our whole state actually, but also want to hear about bridge makers. And um, I, I would be remiss not to at least mention your motto, which I think about almost every day, mm -hmm. which is nothing about us without us. And I, I think um, thinking about young people and everything that we create um, on their behalf, they need to be at the table. And so I uh, thank you so much for being at the table and bringing your uh, young, the young people you work with at the table to work alongside us at Ramsey County and with the city. Um, and as a young leader, you know, you, I, I would love to hear more about all of those things, but also about how that importance of that youth voice. Um, well, why is that important in a room like this as we talk about future investments and ongoing investments? Absolutely. And um, <clears throat> thank you, Ling, for being, you know, a mentor to me and, and, and helping us on this journey, you know, mm -hmm. as much as you have. Um, so I can tell you, <clears throat> you know, why youth voice? Well, Youth voice is important, not just because it's the right thing to do, but it's actually the effective thing to do. Um, and you see, the young people that are closest to America's problems are honestly the ones who are most primed to solve them. They're also going to be the ones that are going to inherit this country's systems uh, and be not just the leaders of tomorrow, but actually they're leading right now. They're leading today. Um, and we'll see the, the example of that, too, here in a second. But um, sort of my experience in COVID, too, <coughs> well, it, this is all very personal to me. So. During the pandemic, I was laid off um, while working hard to support my family, trying to get my father out of debt, trying to pay basic bills at the house. Um, and, you know, the pandemic had me out of a job, and we had a, a law in the state of Minnesota that arbitrarily barred high school students from receiving unemployment benefits. And so I, it was a big problem for me because I was broken about to, you know, get kicked out of my apartment. But when I figured out there was 20,000 other young people across the state with the same problem, that's when I was inspired to do something about it. Um, and so this is how Bridge Makers actually came to be, mm -hmm. right, is the need for youth voice in changing policy. This, this policy was 81 years old, had nothing to do with young people, and was created solely by a bunch of adults and corporate lobbying, people who got into a room and said, young people aren't contributing, they're just buying shoes and popcorn and going to the movies. But the data in our stories proved otherwise. It proved that Young people are actually paying their taxes, going to work, holding down the hospitality industry and the food service industry, the industry's most hard hit by the pandemic. And now we're going to subsidize their taxes to pay for other workers solely because they have the audacity to go to high school and work at the same time. It was all wrong. It was all wrong. And because we were able to be mentored by, um, by adults and uh, bring our new ideas and perspectives and lead as young people, that's how we were able to get that law changed in the only divided legislature in the country at the time. So what can Youth Voice do? It can heal a fractured America, mm -hmm. right? That law um, was bipartisan and got over $35 million out to 20,000 young people across the state of Minnesota, which was a life-saving uh, uh, relief during the pandemic. And after this, Ling, you were one of the first partners um, who really, really wanted to forge something deep, um, you know, with bridge makers and build something that lasted. So Ling was like, what can we do in the county? Well, we talked with young people all across the county, and young people were the ones who came up with um, the programs that you see today. They came up with the categories and the industries that they wanted to see, and young people were the ones who had the bright idea of, well, what about entrepreneurship? What if we trained the job creators? Right? And so young people can heal a fractured America. They can bring new innovative ideas to the table. Um, and that's what we're doing you know, here in Minnesota, in the North Star State. That's what we're doing uh, with bridge makers. We have hundreds of young people running the halls <laughs> of the legislature now. Having, and it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, that's it, that's an, why youth voice? It's also a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, that's another good reason. But, mm -hmm. but, but we're able to do this incredible work because it's not just youth voice, mm -hmm. but it's youth voice collaborating with adults and, mm -hmm. and really building this uh, new America mm -hmm. together, one that works for everybody. So mm -hmm. last I'll say, you know, um, Tom, we're, we're really glad that somebody with your experience being the Secretary of Labor for the largest economy on the planet under President uh, Obama, someone with your experience um, uh, is running the Intergovernmental Affairs Office because I'm sure I can speak for everyone at Bridge Makers and the, the incredible folks at this table. Warm welcome here to Minnesota and we welcome you to work with us, um, you know, and not just having relief in our economy after COVID, but but growing and building back better. That's the slogan, isn't it? I hadn't heard yeah, I hadn't heard that yet. I hadn't heard that yet. Yeah. So <laughs> thank you so much, Cole. Um, 
you know, um, see, Tom, um, <laughs> uh, as I often tell my colleagues that I have the best job in the county, and I think you're mm -hmm. seeing a little bit of why, because I get to spend a lot of time with folks like the, the leaders that you just heard mm -hmm. from. So, um, so that's one side of the picture, the folks that um, are helping mentor, support, build um, mm -hmm. uh, a network, a social, build social capital for young people in Ramsey County and St. Paul. And um, on the other side of the table, we have uh, three program participants that have um, participated in the programs that were just we discussed with their leaders just now. And so I'd like to start with Sai. Um, uh, do you, can you tell us a little bit about your story, Sai? Like, um, tell us a little bit about yourself, what sparked your interest in sort of pursuing a tech uh, future for yourself, a tech career? And um, how is this program supporting you? And, and you know, what makes you hopeful and excited for the future? Hi, I'm Sai Yang, um, born and raised in St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, I actually heard about um, Hack the Gap through just some friends that are also in design. And um, how Hack the Gap has helped me and supported me, um, they do provide a stipend, which um, it's really helpful because during the time that I am in the program, um, I'm not working because I want um, to put in my full attention and I want to be as successful as possible. Um, and I'm actually really excited because we actually just finished um, our certificate yesterday. Um, thank you. Um, I'm really grateful because Hack the Gap is actually providing a paid work experience. So we're going straight into internships um, starting in January. And then um, I'm also really excited for what uh, the future has for me with this certificate because um, I've always, finding jobs, it's always been kind of difficult um, not having much experience or only having experience in like, one section, like let's say customer service. So uh, with this certificate as like a safety net for me to fall back on, I'm, I'm really excited to see what, what I can do with that. Yeah, awesome. thank you. Thank you. Good to see you, Haley. <laughs> Welcome, yeah. Um, I know you've uh, been a big part of the cohort um, that is at Youth Lens 360, helping to create video content for a youth employment hub that we're gonna be creating. So young people interviewing uh, people who look like themselves, doing unique and interesting roles in our community. And as part of that, you're part of a cohort to create that content, but also getting development yourself. And we're investing in your training as a, a creative artist and as a media professional. So if could you tell us a little bit about your story and just um, what you're hopeful for, how you learned about the program, things like that. Hi everybody, my name is Haley Woodard. Um, I grew up uh, loving art and loving the aspect of colors and like polychromatic and stuff like that. Um, I love digital creation. I actually have my own business called Double Haze Visions. I'm a graphic designer. I do a little bit of marketing. Um, actually, I, f I, I found out about um, this program through a, a friend and they thought that I could excel and expand my skills by joining the Youth Lens 360s cohort. So when I joined, um, I got a feel of, of being around different people I wouldn't normally be around. So I had to go out of my comfort zone a little bit. But um, being able to be in a program where I can excel and actually become successful and have the resources, because growing up I didn't have the resources in the community that I lived in. So it's like, it's, it's inspiring and it's like, Having the Ramsey County and uh, Dario to to mentor us young adults and giving us these resources to be successful is beyond um, a deeply gratitude because nobody else is doing it and we should expand these programs and get more kids and more youth out here off the streets and become successful. All right, Abdurman, nice to see you. Um, I know you've been very involved in the Bridge Makers Fellowship as an entre um, budding entrepreneur with amazing ideas. Um, could you tell us a little bit about your story? No problem. So everyone, uh, thank you for being here and uh, being able to share my experiences. I'm a 21-year-old computer science major at the University of Minnesota um, who's deeply passionate about technology and the impact it can have on uh, creating a better and greater society. 
um, specifically what sparked my interest in entrepreneurship. When you think of computer science, sometimes you don't think of entrepreneurship because you think of like all these big tech giants and whatnot and working in these jobs. But computer science taught me that, you know, there's many skill sets that you can build in your toolbox and uh, having the ability to join a program such as Bridge Makers to not just expand your business uh, aptitude, something that's very important to me. But specifically what sparked my interest was my parents who were both entrepreneurs in their home country of Somalia. And in 19, around the mid-1990s, they were uprooted uh, due to a civil war, and their resilience and dedication was the thing that inspired me to continue uh, uh, upholding their legacy, not just for myself, but for my other four siblings as well. Um, this program, specifically Bridge Makers, has been instrumental in my journey so far. It offers me consistent support uh, through weekly meetings, as well as like showing me other people that have done this proce process before me and how they were able to go about doing it and the mentorship opportunities as well, such as the National Initiative. The experience has solidified like, my belief in the ability of creating this successful company and has equipped me with the confidence needed to be a successful entrepreneur. And with regards to the future, I'm excited about my product Valerian and the, uh, and the, uh, the goal of trans uh, transforming the management of office spaces. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. I know. You're going to be my boss. <laughs> <laughs> if he's not, he's very right. yeah. Yeah. Uh, Director Prez, we are just... Tom, uh, please. Tom is, uh, we are really grateful at Ramsey County for the investment of dollars that you can see we put to good use. Um, these are really... Um, I always get emotional. I know. Because good this, reason. right? Good reason. It's so this amazing. is our future. And um, let me just take a second. Wow. I'm wow. so proud. Mm. I'm so proud of the work we do here and these young people. And oh, <laughs> thank you. Look yeah, at that. Look at that. And I, I just want to thank you. I just want to acknowledge that we have amazing talent in this entire room um, that are not just the young people that mm -hmm. we were able to highlight. There's hundreds mm -hmm. more just mm -hmm. like them that we are waiting to invest in and to really think about mm -hmm. how young people heal our fractured America mm -hmm. and that we're investing those dollars here in Ramsey County. Mm -hmm. And we're grateful. Mm -hmm. um, I, this, this is so exciting. <laughs> I know. Uh, um, you know, it really thinks about um, our future and and know that if there are more funds available, we're going to do this <laughs> yes. and more of this, and we would really appreciate those resources. I think I think what really what we wanted to demonstrate is that when we have partnerships, and as you laid out your opening comments, it was so validating to hear that we have shared values and shared visions for this country. And this investment was a, really an extension of your vision, the president's vision, and our country's shared collective of what our future can look like. And this truly is extraordinary. These business owners who were willing to take a chance on us as local government as well, right? There's a lot of distrust of government for good reason. And we said, we want to be a partner. We want to be able to invest. And we want to do it, not us telling you how to do your work, but you telling us what you need so that we can augment that. And that's what's different here. And this is really exciting. We're so glad that you're here. We're so glad we get to showcase and share and brag a little bit because we have a community here in Ramsey County that looks Looks like this table mm -hmm. and lots more people waiting for the resources yeah. for the partnerships that we would like to be able to give to them so thank you so much for being here thanks for feeling our hearts um, and our values here at the table well it's, I mean it's it's really um, been remarkable to listen and uh, and, and see everything that you have done. I was taking some notes here and- uh, Send me a cute, a cute you note, know. impressive group. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, Dario, you talked about storytelling mm -hmm. and you know, the story that I just heard from everyone is a story of grit, resilience, mm -hmm. um, perseverance, accomplishment. Um, and that is, that's, that's the, that's the American dream at work. Mm -hmm. This is what it's all about. We were chatting before, and um, you know, political unrest is what brought you, your family to this country. Political unrest is what brought my family to mm -hmm. this country. They got kicked out. 
of their home country a, a couple generations ago, and this country gave us opportunity. And, and that's what Minnesota's been doing, making sure that uh, whether you came here in 1975 when Saigon fell, or whether you came here in the early 90s when Somalia was in a civil war, whether uh, you confronted discrimination as a Native American living here for generations, or a black American where, uh, you know, we were living amid schools that were separate and unequal. Um, you have come together around a real vision of resilience, grit, uh, and accomplishment. Um, uh, someone said, I, it may have been you, Caroline, you know, that about mentors. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's a whole widespread evidence base about people who have mentors have better outcomes. So, you know, those of you, um, you know, across the city, whether you're working in in the corporate context or the government context or the nonprofit context, please make sure you, you know, continue to understand that. Um, that mentoring is not only the right thing to do, it's, it's in our collective enlightened self-interest uh, to do that. Uh, because I know I had mentors um, and, uh, you know, I, I was a Pell Grant kid. You know, I wasn't born on third base. Um, and, uh, and, and I had people who took care of me. And, you know, it's great to get internships, but again, my plea to folks is unpaid internships. If I had gotten a call like that, you know, when I was running the Democratic National Committee, all our internships were unpaid. Mm -hmm. And I can show you a photo of the cohort of interns before I got there, and then the first cohort of interns when we said we're paying people, the diversity literally went up like 2.5-fold. It was night and day, because if you'd asked me if I wanted to go work somewhere like that, I would have said, sure, and you're gonna work for free. I'm like, ain't happening, <laughs> because it can't happen. Um, and so, you know, again, these are meeting people where they are. I want to be a computer programmer, and that stipend is what's enabling me to pursue that dream. I have childcare needs, mm -hmm. and what I need is help with childcare. I don't have a car. And what I need is help with transportation. I mean, all of these things, meeting people where they are. And all of you are, you know, getting out of your comfort zone. I think uh, one of you said that. And, and, and that's what life's about. Um, you really grow that way. And that's why I really wanted to come here today, because what makes me hopeful, to answer your question, mm -hmm. is all of you, mm -hmm. uh, plainly and simply. And, mm -hmm. Commissioner Moran, thank you for your uh, dogged persistence because uh, uh, I know you have been fighting for this. And, and Ryan, um, and, and thank you for your service, whether it was in state government, city government. You know, you're a serial activist, too. So, um, you know, this is, this is the definition of success. It's, it's, our, it's not hard to get hanged on, mm -hmm. you know, when you read the papers these days because there's – so many challenges, but I, I, I end where I started, which is that moments of seeming gravest peril have also been moments of most remarkable opportunity. And uh, I never thought I would see unemployment rates this low. Um, and that is the leverage that we have uh, to pursue these continuing investments. You know, the, the, the word I have an ambivalent relationship with is program, mm -hmm. you know, because it's, yeah. it's too right. vanilla. Right. Um, right. These are investments. Totally. Um, and uh, these investment participants, uh, by the way, if you look at, I'm a data geek, you know, <laughs> there's something like 500,000 openings right now for computer coders across the country. Mm -hmm. And not all of them require a college degree. And we made investments of when high school kids, because when my gadget goes on the fritz, I'll tell you who I call, my 21-year-old. Yeah. Because I don't know Jack about this, but he does. And uh, he is the one who helps me. And let's take that skill yeah. and proficiency you have and you know, translate it into a middle-class job. That's what we can do day in and day out. So keep telling your story. Keep fighting the fight, and we're going to continue to be partners. This is why 
partnership matters. Um, I'm really, I was proud to work for President Obama. I'm so proud to work for President Biden. These investments and the trust that has been placed in local governments to figure out what's best for communities. You have acted incredibly responsibly, and I am so grateful for that. That's the you in that sentence is you plural. <laughs> and, uh, and that's why I wanted to do this today. And, uh, you know, we had yesterday, I'm looking at you now, Dario, um, we had one of our first holiday parties at the White House yesterday, and it was the, you know, that we have target groups that, you know, we bring in that are really important people, and they were, it was all um, digital influencers from across the oh, country. <laughs> so the average age was, shall we say, a couple standard deviations yeah. uh, from mine, okay? Um, and, uh, and the first lady who was the host, um, I was just on my morning call, and she loved it because, I mean, it was folks that really represent, uh, you know, Gen Zers and Gen Xers, and uh, uh, that's you know, storytelling, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it was really inspiring. So uh, I want to make sure. Talk, look at my team. I want to make sure we get some digital content, not just today, but um, uh, to use in the future to tell this story. Because I don't want just the 70 people in this room to hear this story. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure we amplify so that the rest of Minnesota and the country yeah. sees the Absolutely. great work that you're doing. You're a wonderful laboratory of democracy and um, innovation and um, partnership. I love it. Thank you so much. And in that light, they're going to be presenting to our whole mobile workshop this afternoon for the National oh, Association of Counties is coming. So they're they're on twice today. They're, we're so grateful for this meeting. They're going to be By presenting. Way, she's a big shot, if you haven't known, <laughs> yes. in the National Association <laughs> of Counties. You can't get any bigger than this big shot to my left. That's right. That's right. Yeah, well, we, we're, only, we're only as good as our people that we work with, and you're all amazing. And we have amazing uh, people at Ramsey County that are working, that worked on all of this, that worked on this today that it worked on this afternoon and we're seeing in the in the um, in the crowd here that we have just uh, so many people that made this happen and we're going to continue this work That's right. and we're going to spread it we're going to share it with the country and our our national board this afternoon i think we'll get them to a naco meeting a full naco meeting i think would be great for this work and um we just can't be more grateful to you, Tom, that you mm. made the time oh, to highlight pleasure. this, to really meet with us. We knew your office reached out and said, hey, let's talk about some things you're doing. And, and we're very grateful in Ramsey County and in the city of St. Paul for that. And then, of course, you're speaking at our national board there, meeting tomorrow. tomorrow, so you have a busy schedule. We're just so uh, grateful to you and your team. I'm seeing Luke over there, who's always been so, so wonderful and uh, just such great Luke partners. And Camille. And Camille, yeah, yes. Where? Uh, there where, she is. Where, yeah. There, there she is. is. Yeah. Yeah, so we raise your hand. Right your, there. Team, our team over there. Okay. your team awesome. over there. And if yeah. Ramsey County would raise I mean, your hand, yeah, there we there have such go. a great yeah. Ramsey yeah. County yeah. team. Yeah. Yeah. And St. Paul team. And St. Yeah. Paul yeah. team. Yeah, yeah. 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 we got St. Paul team.